Hello everybody, my name is Davis and welcome back to the video and today we are here for another severe weather breakdown. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off with the SPCL look for a day where we have a marginal risk of severe weather over a good portion of the Midwest here. And then we also have a marginal risk of severe weather down here in portions of West Texas and Southern New Mexico. So let's go ahead and break down the threats that these bring. Now starting off with the tornado threat for today, we do have a 2% risk of a tornado here. This extends all the way from Peoria back up to Chicago. Chicago, and then uh, northwest to southeast goes all the way to the Indiana state line, all the way back up to the Iowa and Wisconsin state line. So do look out in that area today for a potential spin-up tornado, damaging wind threat. We do have two 5% risks of wind gusts of 60 miles an hour or higher here. One is down here in the New Mexico, Texas region, and then one is here in the Midwest, so do look out for that. Hail threat for today, we also have a 5% risk of hail of one inch or larger in both these regions so also be looking out for that now moving on to tomorrow we already have a marginal risk of severe weather here over a decent portion of the ohio valley going into the deep south a little bit so let's go ahead and break down the threats of this brings now starting off with the tornado threat for tomorrow very low no tornado expected as of right now damaging wind threat we do have a five percent risk of wind gusts of 60 miles an hour here this extends almost all the way down to nashville back up almost to indy so do look out for that Damaging wind threat, or sorry, we just did that. Large hail threat, same thing as the damaging wind threat. 5% risk to see hail of one inch or larger in this region as well. Now, going all the way into Thursday, we do not have any marginal risks as of right now. But if I had to guess where we might get one, I would say somewhere here in between like the Kentucky, Wy or uh, West Virginia, Ohio border, somewhere in there. Uh, and then we might also get one down here for like Florida or something. So, moving on to the National Hurricane Center here, we obviously have Tropical Storm Phillip that is a concern right now, but we're going to break it down later and talk about why it's a concern. And then the next thing that we're really going to start to need to worry about here is this disturbance has a 70% chance to form the next 48 hours and a 90% chance to form the next 7 days. And I mean, this could head for the United States, okay? We don't really know as of right now, but it's looking to head in that direction, and it is very likely that it forms. It might even form today. So moving on to the eastern Pacific here, we do have a disturbance that has a 10% chance to form the next 48 hours and a 20% chance to form the next uh, 7 days, but this will most likely not make impact on Hawaii. Now moving on to the path here for Tropical Storm Phillip, uh, this has had a major change since last time I made this video, or uh, made a video on this. So right now it is still a 50 mile per hour storm here as it has been for a long time, but as we go into like the uh, the 29th here, for example, at 1 a.m., we're going to start to see some major effects on the Lesser Antilles here. Now, it's not expected to make a direct landfall on any of these islands except for the British Virgin Islands, so do look out in that region especially, but all of these need to be looking out for some potentially heavy rainfall, high waves, and strong winds from Tropical Storm Phillip here. By uh, October 1st at 1 a.m., this will be a 30-mile-per-hour storm, and that's when it's going to directly pop possibly uh, impact the British Virgin Islands, so do look out for that. <laughs> Uh, before that, it'll be a 35 mile per hour storm, uh, 35, 40, maybe even 45 at some point. But the deal with that is that this isn't expected to have a direct landfall whenever it's this powerful, but you will still feel some effects from it. So all of the Western Antilles here need to be looking out for some heavy rainfall potentially coming up with Tropical Storm Phillip. It is no longer expected to make landfall on the United States of America, luckily, but we still need to be looking out here, okay? <laughs> So, moving on to the watches, warnings, and advisories. We got a few things to talk about, but nothing major. We do have some frost advisories in effect here for portions of North New York. Uh, we have some dense fog, like, kind of warnings here for the entire state of North Dakota, as well as Northwest Minnesota here. That's very rare that you have an entire state covered by warnings, unless it's, like, Rhode Island or something, you know? Uh, we do have some scattered air quality alerts, uh, but the main ones are going to be
community down here in North Texas, kind of in the DFW region. And then we have lots of dense fog advisories across really the entirety of the central U.S. right now, just kind of scattered around. We got some down in Mississippi, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, South Dakota. Obviously, North Dakota has a different type of warning, but it basically means the same thing. But uh, other than that, there's not too much to talk about right now. We have some remaining flood warnings in effect from Tropical Storm Ophelia here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. So if you guys did enjoy this video, then make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.